right. How many extroverts do I have in the room? Okay. How many of you consider yourself an introvert? Okay. How many of you didn't raise your hand? <laughs> All right. I was never much of a hand raiser either. In fact, most of my life, I avoided raising my hand. I remember my first day of second grade. I was so scared and nervous that the second the door opened, I hid behind my parents. I sat quietly in the back and prayed my teacher didn't call on me or make me talk. Then there was a time in seventh grade when I had to give a presentation in front of my art class. I barely had time to prepare. I lied to my teacher and said I wasn't ready and ended up taking an F on the project, something I did repeatedly growing up. All of this was the start of a 20 year period that I've come to call the dark ages. <laughs> or the how horrible it must be for you to be an introvert years, during which I would hear things like, well, it's okay that you're an introvert, as if to imply that being an introvert somehow made me a second-class citizen. I was constantly told that I would never have a successful career as an introvert, let alone succeed as a person. Now, this wouldn't be a problem if it was just me hearing this, but on Sunday, we learn introverts make up over a third of our society. Is this the message we want so many people to hear? Growing up, we're under constant pressure to join sports teams, extracurricular activities, and volunteer groups. But if you sit alone at lunch, then there's definitely something wrong with you. So I played sports, I wrote for the school paper and yearbook, and I worked as an RA in the dorms. <laughs> Talk about an introvert's nightmare. <laughs> I did all of this with a fake smile and a deep breath. I kept participating in activities geared toward extroverts in hopes it would change who I was as a person. I remember constantly thinking that something was wrong with me because I didn't enjoy most of these activities. Um, it took me a long time to learn that being an introvert has nothing to do with being shy. It doesn't mean introverts are antisocial, and it surely doesn't mean introverts can't be leaders. These are just some of the many myths you hear about introverts these days. The biggest misconception about introverts is that we're shy. In reality, shyness is the fear of negative judgment from those around us. Being an introvert simply means we need alone time to recharge, whereas extroverts typically recharge through big social settings. The myth that introverts are antisocial is far from the truth. We're intimately selective and prefer deeper, meaningful conversations. We tend to flounder during big networking events with hundreds of people we don't know, but invite us to dinner or happy hour and we'll be your best friend. Learning by listening is a trait many introverted leaders consistently demonstrate. Introverted leaders listen first, think second, and speak third. According to Forbes, 40% of executives consider themselves an introvert. I dare you to say that none of these people are a leader. It wasn't until my late 20s that I would learn being an introvert has a lot of advantages. I've been fortunate to have a number of mentors who, whether they realize it or not, have ignited my introvert. They taught me ways I could utilize my introvert strengths. The opportunity for advanced preparation is key for an introvert. Environments like discussion panels, group meetings, and brainstorming sessions are less than ideal. I know that if I'm asked to participate in one of these, I have to prepare my thoughts well in advance. I forgot what's next. <laughs> Quiet moment of introspection. <laughs> <laughs> While my counterparts may believe I'm shy or antisocial, I know that my people skills lie in developing strong one-on-one -on -one relationships, like we've come to expect from community managers, volunteer and board relations staff, and membership departments. Following up after conferences, meetings, and phone calls are great ways for me to harness all of my strengths as an introvert. Whether it's a handwritten note after a conference or an email after a group meeting, following up gives me time to collect and compose my thoughts. My, introverts ma er, my mentors made me realize there's nothing wrong with my set of skills. It's this newly found self-realization that it has allowed me to succeed as an introvert. Throughout my journey, I've had to overcome being misunderstood because of my quiet temperament. Every one of us has the ability to do something amazing. Some of us just do it more quietly than others. Chances are you know an introvert. Maybe it's a friend, a colleague, someone you volunteer with, or maybe it's the introvert within you. Whomever it is, it's time we ignite your introvert. So here's what I want you to do. Open up the envelopes at your tables and under your chairs. Uh, first uh, person in each aisle. Inside, there is a small guide with ways that you can ignite your introvert. Use this guide over the next 30 days to ignite the introverts in your life. To show your support for the introverts in your life, add a ribbon to your badge. Um, use this guide over the next 30 days to help the introverts in your life shine. 
give them opportunities to contribute using their strengths as an introvert. If you accept this, help me prove, or with your help, or something along those lines, <laughs> um, <laughs> with your help, we can prove that introvert isn't a bad word. Thank you.